welcome back to the Critical Care Survival Guide. Today we're going to be talking about a topic that is very important with regards to COVID-19, and that's coagulopathy. We have been seeing patients come in with COVID-19 disease, and they're developing clots. Clots both in their micro vessels inside their lungs. We have data from autopsies when they've dissected the lungs and looked in. They're seeing both uh, microthrombi clots, but occasionally larger clots and larger blood vessels in the lungs. Then, as you may have seen in your patients, we're seeing DVTs, pulmonary emboli, and the like. So the question we're going to tackle in today's guide is maybe why is this happening and what can we do to be preventing it? So first, why is this happening? COVID-19 causes a ton of inflammation in the body. You're seeing the inflammatory markers, the D-dimers are going up, CRPs are going up, fibrinogens, etc. So we know that inflammation is one of the big risk factors for forming thrombi. In addition, patients that are in the hospital, they're not moving very much. They're in bed, lying flat, uh, they can't breathe, so sometimes they're having to be put on ventilators because of oxygenation problems. And all that happens, that immobility combined with the inflammation of this disease leads to clot formation. So what are some things we should be doing to combat this? Well, number one, we need to be aggressive with DVT prophylaxis. What do I mean by that? Well, you gotta start it earlier than we've been starting it, like in the emergency department. In addition, those D-dimer levels, they go up in this disease, so it's hard to know for sure how we should respond to elevating D-dimer levels. That being said, what a lot of people are doing with their chemical prophylaxis is they are starting people on low molecular weight heparin. That's a little bit better than unfractionated heparin because you don't have to go in the room so much. You don't have to check those PTTs like you had on unfractionated heparin, and uh, it's very reliable in how it works to prevent clots. Patients who have rising D-dimer levels in spite of being on once daily low molecular weight heparin, a lot of people are moving them to BID and increasing the dose. So say for example, if you were to start at 0.5 mg per kilogram on your DVT prophylactic dose, you might consider increasing that to maybe 0.8 or even one milligram per kilogram in divided doses for prophylactic dosing. On top of that, a wise move would be to check an anti-factor 10A level. This is how we monitor the amount of anticoagulation you're getting with your low molecular weight heparins. We're typically checking those three to five hours after their third dose. That way you know your drug has hit steady state. Finally, if you have high reason to believe that you have a thrombosis, let's say for example, you have checked an ultrasound and found a DVT, uh, or maybe you have a CT study showing a pulmonary embolus, obviously, nothing's changed there. You want to aggressively anticoagulate these patients with full dose low molecular weight heparin. Sometimes people uh, are switching these patients uh, onto DOACs as needed. Be on watch for thrombosis. Be aggressive. Start your prophylaxis early. Monitor the depth of your pro prophylaxis and have a plan to bridge these people from the hospital to when they get home with appropriate follow-up. Thanks again for watching the Survival Guide and please do subscribe.